down as one of the Illini's all-time greats. And it's for more than just the wins and losses. I remember him just being a special person. A family man, as well as a Hall of Fame coach. Lou Henson, he personifies dignity. Tonight, we hear from those who knew him best. He was special, such a special guy. And his players who admired their old school coach. They were courageous, they fought to the end. Look up the word fighter in the dictionary, you'll see a picture of Coach Henson next to it. From the final four to beating cancer, Lou Henson's legacy lives on. Illini Nation presents Lou's Legacy. Good evening from State Farm Center and Lou Henson Court. I'm your host, Brett Behrens. In the next 30 minutes, we are going to honor, remember, and celebrate the man who turned Illinois basketball into what it is today. There may be no one who better personifies the Illini than Lou Henson. He roamed the sidelines here at then Assembly Hall for 21 seasons. Yes, the Hall of Fame coach will be remembered for all the wins, 779 of them in all including a school record 423 in the orange and blue. But it's Hulu was as a person, father, family man, and friend that will forever cement his legacy as one of the all-time greats. He was just a good role model for everything you wanted in, within to represent your university. He did so many positive things, right things, day after day after day. I always remember him telling me the university was here long before me. It's going to be here long afterwards. I want to leave it in better shape when I'm done. Lou passed away at the age of 88 after a long and brave battle against cancer. An orange blazer was placed as a memorial outside as fans came by to pay their respects. Later that night, the building that Lou made so famous was lit up in orange and blue. Henson's teams were known for defense and a tough-minded approach. We'll take a look back at some of his best squads a little bit later in the program. But we welcome in WCIA 3's Marley Weirden now. And for all of his accomplishments on the court, it seems like his former players remember him best for the type of man he was. Of course, Brett, and that's because he built a legacy beyond the basketball court. Lou impacted the lives of his players, and they still remember what it was like to play for him decades later. Lou Henson is a, is a guy, he, he, he personifies dignity. He dignified us, he dignified himself, he dignified that team. And that's one of the things I appreciate most about him. That's the true measure of the legacy Lou Henson built at Illinois. As the winningest coach in program history, victories are remembered. But the kind of man he was off the court, that's what makes him an icon success of the guys that came through his program lets you know what kind of individual he is, you know, and the guys are fighting. You know, you look at look up the word fighter in the dictionary, you'll see a picture of Coach Henson next to it. Henson fought a long battle with cancer after being diagnosed in 2003. He retired shortly after that, but his impact never left Illinois. When you get a praise from Coach Henson, he really means it. Just being around him, me, my legacy is great just being around him because the way I respect him, I mean, it, it just, it just a wonderful person. After passing on Saturday, July 25th, Henson was laid to rest later that week during a private family ceremony at Mount Hope Cemetery. It's right across the street from where his legacy was built. I remember him just being a special person. He was special to me. And that's why we're standing on Lou Henson Court here today, where future Illini teams will continue to play. But the memories from his former players, that's what's going to carry on his legacy for years to come. Marley, thanks. It seems like everyone has a Lou story, whether you received a signed copy of one of his books or met him around town. For his players, a lot of their memories are funny stories. I can remember one when I he subbed me into the game and he said, Marcus, go get Liberty. So I said, Coach, you want me to go in and take myself back out of the game? So that was one of the stories that I was telling a lot. My favorite Lou story is when uh, he decided to race Urban Small in a sprint. We thought that Coach couldn't run, but we found out that day that he actually beat Urban in a sprint. Even though he waited till Urban got tired, <laughs> he still beat him in the sprint.
There are always a lot of laughs and stories at Lou's lunch. A group of guys get together every week, and although Lou is no longer there, they are continuing the tradition in his honor. A lot of legends around that table from time to time. Every Tuesday for longer than anybody can remember, a table is reserved at Old Orchard in Savoy. The group varies, but the conversation remains the same. Nobody's complaining about the food, but there's a lot of sports talk. To have Coach Henson there much of the time, everybody loved him. Regulars Don Rue and Ron Alexis were both longtime friends of Lou. Ted Beach and Jim Wright helped the Illini win back-to-back -back Big Ten titles in 1951 and 52, finishing third nationally both times. Steve Kelly and Lauren Tate covered Henson's teams for years, sharing about the man they ultimately called friend. I think you found out uh, upon his uh, death that uh, he, he he hit home with a lot of people. He never met a stranger. He, may, he would make anybody feel like they were a long lost friend. He'd ask you about your family who he didn't know. He made you feel like he really cared about what you were doing and what was going on in your life. The tab is split nowadays, but back when Lou was attending, he always did his best to pick up the bill for everyone. Laura and I had to try to get crafty from time to time to see if we could uh, find a way to get the check before he asked for it, but uh, he's hard to beat. Uh, a lot of times he'd call and maybe arrange that before we even got here to make sure you give Coach Henson the, the check, and he, he always seemed to get that done. I don't think it surprises anyone that knew Lou that he would try and pick up the tap. Henson will forever be remembered for starting some of the great Illini traditions, including the Orange Crush, and wearing that infamous orange sport coat. It's something Illinois coaches have continued. We asked several of Henson's successors what it meant to wear that orange coat and what they remember most about the man who paved the way for them. I still remember sitting on the bench at Purdue and you'd be looking down and you knew who the coach was, that's for sure. It was Coach Henson in that bright orange. You know, he's the first person that comes to comes to mind when I think of that orange coat, you know, what a privilege it was to wear it. Every time I was around him, he would call and check in or he'd stop by the office. Whenever you hung up or he left the office at Oven, you felt better. You felt the positivity coming from him. He's a reason I wanted to be here. And all along, my expectation for Illinois basketball has always been it's one of the best programs in the country. To have the guy who put all that together in the modern day and, and the success and knowing how many people he touched, uh, not just players, but in the community, uh, that's pretty special. We got great results. Uh, teams played extremely hard. Uh, and yet the thing that uh, comes to mind for me is how kind he was, how caring he was. You know, he and Mary, you know, they kind of go hand in hand when you think about Coach Henson, uh, you know, how, uh, how good they were to other people. Thanks to all the coaches for their time. We've got their entire interviews on our website, WCIA.com. We've got so much more to come. We take a look back at some of Lou's best teams next. Plus, we sit down with Mary Henson. I'm telling you, if Lou had, had taken that Oklahoma job, there might have been a divorce. <laughs> they were married for more than six decades. Mary remembers her late husband and their favorite moments together. Welcome back to Lou's Legacy. There were several shots during Henson's tenure that will be forever remembered. Eddie Johnson shined first back in 1979. The video still gives Illini Nation goosebumps today, taking down Magic Johnson and number one ranked Michigan State, the eventual national champion that year. I've had 100,000 people tell me about it. They were there. I didn't know the, I didn't know Assembly Hall held that many. But you know what? It, it, was a, it was a tremendous opportunity for me to be a hero. And if you know anybody that knows me in regards to basketball, I didn't shy away from anything on the court. The Atlanta actually lost 11 out of their next 15 games after starting 15-0. They made the NIT a year later and got in the NCAA tournament for the first time under Henson in 1981. Tony Yates was Henson's go-to recruiter until Jimmy Collins came along in 1983. WCIA3's Marley Weirda rejoins us once again. And for Henson and Collins, they had some great times together. They go way back from Lou's former player to his assistant coach to now a longtime friend. Jimmy Collins remembers the first time he met Lou Henson, and it all started on his recruiting visit to New Mexico State. Gave me a pair of Chuck Taylors and asked me if I could dunk. I said, yeah, but I'd been on a bus for four days. 
<laughs> and uh, so <laughs> Dan, I could barely touch the rim. And I was thinking, wow, maybe I better get back on this bus and leave. I'm so happy that I never got back on that bus. And the rest was history. After Jimmy played for Henson at New Mexico State, he later became a part of his Illinois coaching staff in 1983. Collins helped build an iconic era of Illinois basketball, recruiting top-level talent like Dion Thomas. To me, he's a man that gave me an opportunity um, to play at the University of Illinois that quite literally changed the trajectory of my family. And that doesn't happen um, if not for Lou Henson. After Henson retired at Illinois in 1996, Collins became the head coach at UIC, putting everything into practice he learned from Lou. I think I might have been a little rougher on our players than him, but then again, I don't know, because he was pretty rough on us when I came through there. But uh, uh, a lot of the things that he talked about, yeah, I took that with me and it helped. Collins' longtime relationship with Henson budded into a lifelong friendship. Their last conversation was over the phone on a Father's Day. There, there probably won't be another uh, coach uh, who understood people and understood the game uh, better than Lou Henson. And that's just one of the many ways Lou Henson will be remembered. One of his best teams was actually in Collins' first year with the program. Collins didn't recruit the 84 Illini, but that team's success certainly gave him a head start in becoming a national name on the trail. The 80s belonged to the Illini, with the 84 team winning Lou Henson's lone Big Ten title, advancing to the Elite Eight. A three-point loss at Kentucky in the regional final still stings today. The NCAA changed its rule after that, prohibiting a team from playing on its home court in the tournament. Still a great season, finishing sixth in the final AP poll with a 26-5 record. And it sparked a run that will never be forgotten. Illinois didn't finish worse than fourth in the Big Ten the rest of the decade. It all led up to the 1989 Flying Illini that still holds national prestige today. Nick Anderson, Kenny Battle, Marcus Liberty, Lowell Hamilton, and Stephen Bardo brought a new brand of basketball to the program and country. A number one national ranking, a historic run, and Lou Henson's best team. When we had the moniker Flying Illini, we were the only team in the country that had its own special name given to us by the Dick Vitale. We took that stuff seriously. Low ski will grab the rebound. Uh, oh, Nick will jam it down. Uh, to this day, that's the best moment I've ever had in basketball because it was pure joy. We honor Lou by looking back at some of his most prestigious awards with the Alana. But first. It was no ordinary marriage. <laughs> It was a wonderful 65 and a half years. If you ever saw Lou Henson out and about over the years, there's a good chance Mary was with him. The two were married for 65 and a half years, had four children, 12 grandchildren, and seven great grandchildren. Mary was, in many ways, the rock of the family, a guiding light, and not only Lou's biggest cheerleader, but the biggest cheerleader for all of Illini Nation. I had the honor and privilege to sit down with Mary recently. She most of all just wants to say thanks. We are so beholden to everyone for all their support and love and caring uh, that they've shown our family and shown Lou. What's family mean to you, Mary? Oh, it means everything. It's always meant everything to Lou and me. To us, family was the rock that we uh, not only leaned on through the tough times and so forth, but we always felt that faith, family, and friends in that order. It's a good way to put it. How would you describe your marriage with Lou? <laughs> well, it was no ordinary marriage. <laughs> it was a wonderful, wonderful 65 and a half years in coaching. You ha had lots of ups and downs, but the good thing about Lou, and much more than me, he could keep an even keel throughout all of it. Was he the same when he was younger as he was when he was older, that charismatic kind of guy, fun-loving? This tall, dark, and handsome ring a bell. <laughs> he was a handsome guy and so fun to be with, and he was 
special, such a special guy. What did integrating Hardin Simmons mean to him and to you? We just couldn't see that anything else would be appropriate. And so when he went to Hardin Simmons and f found out, hey, this is an all white school, he wasn't going to take that job if. And he just spoke right directly to the board. Uh, I will take this job with one stipulation and if you integrate the school. I understand he had an offer from Oklahoma the same time he did from Illinois. The same day. I'm curious how much of a factor you had in that decision to come to Illinois and moving back closer to your roots, Mary. Duh. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, if Lou had, had taken that Oklahoma job, there might have been a divorce. <laughs> But we were so thrilled. The rest is history. Being a coach's wife isn't always easy. <laughs> and we can laugh about that right now. Well, well, I can now. Going through that, we lived our lives just like ordinary people, except that our focus was so different. Our focus was on the job and what it would take to have this job succeed. And I knew at the time that I had to be a big part of that. And that's why I traveled with him all the time to all the games. He wanted me there. He wanted me to be an extension of him. And actually, that's sort of what happened. He was such a good guy. And he wanted, when he couldn't cover all the bases, he wanted me covering a few. Many thanks to Mary for sharing some of those great memories with us. We've got our full conversation posted on our website, WCIA.com. We're not done yet. After one final timeout, we go back in time into the Henson's Illini room. We'll see all you Illinois people next year. Well, what do you expect out of night? What do you expect out of him? I mean, he's a classic bully. Lou Henson never cussed, but that didn't mean he always saw eye to eye with everyone, most notably Bob Knight. March 10th, 1991, Henson let Knight have it in the postgame press conference, a rare outburst by Lou after his Illini lost by 12 to the Hoosiers. They later made amends when Lou retired in 1996, his last game at Assembly Hall in Bloomington. You'll see this chair like I would as a coach with Indiana on it. And I know that you'll remember different games than I will when you look at this chair. Best wishes from Indiana basketball. And we haven't agreed on everything over the years, but I'm going to miss you. Is this really the Bob Knight that I know? Hinton announced he was retiring in February of 1996 following a win over Iowa. Lou said he wanted to stay another year, but decided to end all speculation about his future with the team. It is with a deep sense of gratitude, a great pride and nostalgia that I wish to announce my retirement following this basketball season. It marked the end of an outstanding era for Illinois basketball, and there was a fitting celebration at season's end to honor Lou after more than two decades in Champaign. Lou and Mary Henson have lived in the same house in Champaign since moving to town while also spending part of the year in Las Cruces, New Mexico. The Henson homestead is a place thousands of people have come and made countless memories over the years. And fittingly enough, it's where Lou passed away last month. We take a trip back in time with WCIA3 sports director Chris Widlick and Lou showing off his Illini room. It's got memorabilia from all your years, basketballs from some of your championship teams. Uh, I know this one means something to you, 400th Illini coaching victory, uh, one of your many milestones. Well, it, uh, it really uh, is, uh, Chris, of course, getting it at Iowa City, and this is my high school basketball, and that's back when I had hair, Chris. <laughs> you, I know you can't believe it. Tell me about more about this room itself. Who started this with the artifacts in here, and, and who keeps it going? Well, first of all, Chris, I do very little. Mary is the one who does everything. She is just excellent. She's a great wife. And uh, uh, through the years when I would get down, you always get down, particularly in coaching, she would lift me up, and uh, uh, she does all these things. This room means a lot. It brings back very fond memories. Lou was certainly a friend to all, but that didn't mean he liked to lose. Playing checkers and bridge were two of his favorite pastimes. I found that out firsthand back in 2017. There we go. 
More than two decades after his coaching career ended, Lou Henson is still as competitive as ever. A jack of hearts. Nowadays, you'll find him holding court on the card table, playing bridge. When you work, you use your mind all the time. Well, when you're retired, if you're not careful, we'll just so I play bridge four or five times a week, so I, I try to stay active. Henson hosts his own games. Those tend to be more casual. It's all business at Ginger Creek, though, where 25 to 30 people routinely play. From college kids to a 100-year-old woman, Lou plays them all. And make no mistake about it, he wants to win. Henson recruited Karen Walker to play with him last week. She's one of the most experienced players in town. He hasn't accomplished nearly enough at basketball. He had to come to bridge and find a, find a new challenge. And Lou was certainly always up for a new challenge. Accomplished card and checkers player, just one of his many skills. Lou received countless awards, recognition, and honors in his career, and especially in retirement. One of the biggest was his induction into the National Collegiate Basketball Hall of Fame in Kansas City on November 20th, 2015. Just a few weeks later, another big time honor. The court at State Farm Center dedicated in his name in a memory that ranks towards the top of the list for the Hensons. Dozens of friends, family, and former players on hand in fittingly the first game in the newly renovated arena. One of Lou's last crowning achievements was his induction into the Illinois Athletics Hall of Fame. He was the headliner of the 2018 class, celebrated in Chicago at a black tie optional gala at the Field Museum, and later formally inducted at State Farm Center, forever cementing his name into Illini lore as an all-time great. 100 years from now, I think he'll be the greatest coach that Illinois ever had. Unfortunately, we weren't able to win the national championship for him. But, you know, you look at his body of work throughout, not just with that team, but with all the teams that he had here. I think he's got to go down as the greatest coach of all time here. That's all the time we have. Let the celebration of life continue for a man and family who meant so much to so many. Good night.